Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we are going to be going ahead and building a automatic stabilization system for your boat here in Stormworks. We'll go through all the issues that you'll probably encounter uh, when building a boat regarding the balancing slash stabilization of this boat itself and we'll actually go ahead and show you all the different components that you'll need to build the system itself. Uh, once again this system is what I use in my creations however there might be a different one out there that you probably could use um, however I found this is quite a useful and quite uh, easy one to set up uh, so with all that said we'll go ahead and we'll get started so we're back here in the workbench uh, as you can see in front of me i've gone ahead and built up an example hull of a medium to large ship where you probably would need a stabilization system along with that we've also built a little bit of a um like bridge and um, actual superstructure to the building or to the ship itself. Uh, I've also added a couple of weight blocks just in various places around the ship. This is obviously going to simulate that uh, we fill the deck with different objects, whether it be maybe a crane on one side, uh, the funnels and computer components or whatever, all over the ship. So obviously your weight's gonna be in different places. Now, the first thing you want to do is obviously when building a ship, you want to try and get your center of gravity as low as possible. Now, obviously you have a limit to this because depending on how your how big your hull is, you can only bring it down. So for example, you place all your components you need on top. You can only add so much weight to the bottom of the ship before your center of gravity is going to be low enough, but your actual hull is going to be so low in the water that it's, it's not feasible anymore. So pretty much what we're going to be talking about is the easiest way to actually counter this. And what most people do use is by just going ahead and adding a simple line of weight blocks along the bottom of the hull. This then obviously brings the center of gravity down of the ship itself. However, this won't obviously react to sudden movements of the vessel itself, whether you're turning sharply or, for example, you have a crane on one side and you've lifted a heavy load. This will obviously, obviously it will help stabilize it, but it won't do much against heavy loads and sharp turns and big waves. This is where a automatic stabilization system comes in. Now, as I said earlier in the video in the intro, there's multiple different ways of doing it by using uh, ballast systems, propellers, so on and so forth. But I find the way that I'm about to show you is going to be the easiest one. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be measuring the tilt of the ship or the sway of the ship by using a tilt sensor. So we'll go ahead and just grab a tilt sensor just over here. We're just going to place it down at the highest point of our ship where we have the maximum amount of sway possible. So obviously the top of the bridge here itself. Now, as you can see, when you place the tilt sensor down, it has these little arrows. Now, where these arrows are pointing is going to be measuring either the positive or negative. So you can see here the arrows are paint, pointing towards the left of the ship. So if it actually goes to the left, if it sways or tilts to the left, it's going to read out a negative value. If it then goes to the right, it's going to read out a positive value. Same goes if we were to, for example, face it frontwards. It would then go, hey, if this part goes if more forward, it's then going to go a negative value out. Or if it goes more to the back, it's going to give us a positive value. So once we have the first component, this is going to be obviously to measure how our ship is swaying. We then need to go ahead and connect to a measuring component. The measuring component for this tutorial, I'm going to be using as a PID. Now the PID itself is going to take the variable, which is obviously our tilt here. So we'll go ahead and just connect this up. This is going to be our variable. Our set point for this tutorial is going to be zero because we obviously want the ship to always be level. Excuse me. So we obviously need to keep the set point at zero, so we don't need to change that at all. The, obviously, then we need to make sure the PID is on by default. So we'll go ahead, just give it a simple on signal, ignore that, there we go. Simple on signal, make sure it's always on. The configuring for this obviously will change depending on how much weight you have or how big your ship is or how small it is, so on and so forth. So I won't get into configuring this. However, the easiest way I find to figure it out is give it a simple, a simple value of 100 to start with and give it 10,000, kill that to zero and start with that. Then you'll see now what we'll do is we'll add in two, di two display blocks at the rear of the ship itself. Got those two down. We're then going to connect one of those to the output of the PID. 
once we have that connected fantastic and then we're going to connect the tilt sensor to the other one so then we can obviously go ahead once we have this spawned in we can then measure what the tilt sensor is going to be reading and then what the PID is going to be reading itself. Now, for the purpose of tutorial, I'll just go ahead and name the PID is going to, I think, to the right one. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and just say, hey, this is going to be the PID and this is going to be the tilt sensor. So we can compare it and then obviously make our adjustments. So whether it's not going fast enough or it is going too fast, we'll be able to tell by these numbers coming out of that. Now, you're probably wondering, well, all great, you've added these components in. How do you actually get the ship to sway left and right, depending on what we're measuring? Well, what we go ahead and do, and what I use for most of my creations, is I do a simple, a simple adjustment by using actual compact linear track bases. So we're going to be putting these down. We want to make sure it's going in the same direction as our tilt sensor. So as I said, we're facing left as negative, so we'll face that left, which is negative also. We're just going to add a couple of these actual compact track bases down along the build itself. So we've got a few of those down now. We're going to be adding the extension arms. The extension arms are just going to be, as soon as I select the extension arm, it's going to be to bring it out to as far as we want in the build itself. So I'm just going to bring it to there for the purpose of this tutorial. And then what we're going to be doing is we obviously have to go ahead and merge all of these together to make sure it's one consistent object. So we'll go ahead and just drag a block all the way across here and then go to our merge tool, merge these all together. And then what we do is we actually add the weight blocks that we would have added to the hull. As I said earlier, the simple way of doing it, we're actually going to be adding to this compact track base or large one as we've now built it up to. Once you've added those on, this system, once you have it connected up, is then going to sway either left and right depending on what signal you give it. So for example, we're giving it, we're saying, hey, we're leaning to the left, which as we said was a negative value. Our PID is gonna output a positive value, which means it's then going to then move this track along and say, hey, ship is leaning to the left, move the weights to the right and counterbalance it. And that's pretty much about it for how getting the system working. Um, what we'll do now is we'll just finish up doing the logic. So as I said, we need to make sure we have the PID connected to the actual track bases themselves. Now you can place this anywhere in your ship. I'm just placing it towards the front of the ship for now. You can place it toward, more towards the rear, to wherever you want, it's up to you. Uh, you just have to play around until you get the balancing right. You wanna try and get it to the center of this. So what I might actually just go ahead and do is just delete this side here and just move it more towards the center of the ship itself to get a better output. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. And then I'm just gonna build up some of this and you'll as I said you'll play around with it until you get it to how you want it to work uh, it's pretty much the basics so we got that set up make sure we just go ahead and finish connecting this all up once we have it connected add the weights that we need to add on there now the weights that you add will depend on how deep you want the ship to actually sink into the water or how much you want to actually counter the weight of. Uh, so if you are with a heavy load, you might have to have more weight or have it move more to the left or right, uh, but it'll be very. So once we have that, uh, as I said, just make sure you have all your blocks connected. So I'm just gonna add that. Because we're in advanced mode, we obviously need a battery to operate all this. So I'm just gonna add a nice large battery. Now you can actually add the battery itself to the weight system, because obviously you think about it, your weights will be moving left and right um, and the batteries are quite heavy so you could add that instead of having um, unused weight if that made sense once we have that placed down we're just going to go ahead connect all the electric up to the different components we then have everything done we can then go ahead now and actually spawn this in i'm just going to go check these you can see they've actually because we placed them down having the x-plane enable they've gone and placed down incorrectly so i'm just going to replace these as soon as i can actually get it to there we go we got one we said this was the pid this was the tilt fantastic connect that back up to the electricity Connect the PID to the PID, if I can get there, fantastic. Connect that to the tilt sensor. 
great. And then we can go ahead and spawn this and actually see what's going on with the ship itself. You can see here that now the ship is leaning lower to the left and then it goes to the right. So it's countering it, but it's countering it too much. So you can see here the pit is going way negative, way positive, way negative, way positive. And then our tilt sensor is actually going, hey, we're only one over 0 0.01 over and then 0. negative 0 0.01 over. So the pit is actually overworking. So it's doing too much work. But you can see how it's actually countering the balance now and it's going left to right. So we need to go ahead and start actually adjusting the pit and fine tuning it. Now, a good way to do this is that hence the reason why I set it so high is that now we know it's aren't overworking, we can now start working on bringing it down. So I'm gonna go say, hey, let's bring it down to 50, bring this down to 5,000, and then we keep on doing that until we get it to a point that we're happy with. And then you can even fine tune it more. So you can see now, it's still countering it a little bit too much. Um, this is pretty good. You can see here it's still jumping between 0 0.2 and negative 0 0.2 and then increasing as every rock goes by. So we'll go ahead and just keep on decreasing it. So we'll decrease about 50 that time. We'll decrease it by 30 now. Drop this down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this up to 8,000. Leave it like that for now. Let's see what happens. You just have to keep on fine tuning. There's plenty of guides on PIDs online, um, but I just found this is the easiest way. So you can see that's still jumping quite a bit. It's jumping quite fast. We might want to reduce the actual deterrative. So we'll drop that down to 2000. See what happens now. Zero point three, zero point three. So it's still counteracting. So we can drop it even more. Drop it down to ten, one thousand. So you can see now it's only zero. It's it's actually it's going between zero point seven and zero point four. So it's actually stabilized really well now. And you can obviously carry on and, and play with it and fine tune it even more. But I, I think that's pretty happy. There is obviously a variation of a couple decimals, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm pretty happy with that. As you can see now, we'll go ahead and just actually add, add in a high amount of wind and see what happens. You can see the boat is actually quite stable and that's because the active system underneath us is working quite well if we go ahead and we'll disable the wind now the boat should actually now start leveling out and we'll jump to third person camera so i can just show you a little better and there we go Boat is pretty much leveled out, and that's thanks to our weights. You can see that activity working inside there, and our boat is now perfectly leveled out. As I said, you might have to play around with it, how much weight you use uh, and where you place it in your hull. As you can see, ours is a little bit heavier in the front in comparison to the back, so we might have to move it towards the back a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the basics of it. It covers all, all the components you need and how you can actually go ahead and set it up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. As always, guys, I hope you have found it somewhat informative and useful. Um, I know a couple of you have been asking for this, so I've gone ahead and done it. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe. Obviously, there's a lot more videos coming in the future. Um, also, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, any suggestions for new videos? Uh, where, obviously, where you think you would like to see the channel heading? I'm thinking of doing a couple new series, as I've discussed in a couple of previous videos, and obviously on my live streams with you guys. Uh, and I've also now started recently thinking about maybe expanding into a couple different games uh, however I'm not quite sure exactly what type of games it's going to be um, but I have had my eye on a couple of different ones and we'll see if we can get uh, some deals with those. But with that all said I'll go ahead and we'll see you in the next video.